Grand Mer, Quebec, a town in a picturesque setting 90 miles to the east of Montreal. Main industry, pulp and paper. A French-Canadian town, peaceful and quiet. Or it was until that day in July 1963. It was July 20th to be exact, and that afternoon the skies over Grand Mer would be the scene of one of nature's greatest phenomena, a total eclipse of the sun. It was a day Grand Air would never forget. People poured into town, thousands of them, all intent on viewing the once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. An excursion train whistled in from Montreal, carrying hundreds of amateur astronomers. They had come a long way to see the show, but the folks back home would see it too. Live TV coverage would be relayed throughout North America. While the Montreal enthusiasts were being led to their vantage point, other groups were already set up in town. The Royal Astronomical Society of Canada had been preparing for this day for more than a year. A master plan had been worked out. All members had their assignments. Well, almost all. Some were to take photographs and motion pictures. Others would make precise observations. The total eclipse would last only 63 seconds. But during this brief time, much could be learned about the mysteries of the sun's outer atmosphere. On the other side of town, a group of scientists from McGill University were having a final run through of their assignments. Their objective was not to study the eclipse itself, but its effect on the Earth's upper atmosphere. This instrument, a spectrograph, had been borrowed from the nose cone of a U.S. space rocket. While final preparations were being made at the McGill site, Similar activity was going on at other locations nearby, where scientists from England, France, Italy and Holland were tensely awaiting the crucial period. And in the streets of town, the people of Grand Mer were waiting too. So were the excursioners from Montreal, now in position on the town's recreation field. Health officials had warned of the possible danger to eyesight, and the people had responded with some rather ingenious devices. The eclipse was in its partial phase now. The moon was inching across the face of the sun, coming closer and closer to totality. Only a narrow band of sun left now, and below day is turning to night. the last fleeting seconds before totality. And there it is. A 
a special camera captures the spectacular solar corona. And in a flashing moment, totality is over and the earth begins to lighten. The moon slowly leaves the sun's path and daylight returns as quickly as it left. The celestial show is over now and soon the town will be quiet again. But Grammaire has had its day in the sun and can begin looking forward to its next total eclipse in only 400 years time.